Hey guys. I hate that you can see my glasses or the screen in my glasses. Um I think I'm the only one here so far. Looking, looking for viewers. Yay! It's Jessica. Um, just in case anybody is on, I do want to do a quick um, screen share. I think I can do it this way. If I share it this way? Nope. All right, what I was trying to do is show you guys my screen. Um, up in the top corner of your screen on the left-hand side, there should be a blue box with white, right, like white lines. That's my daughter Arabella's hand. <laughs> Get out of here. Um, hey, go to bed. Um, if you click that button, that is your chat button. So you should be able to, it'll bring something up, and you should be able to type on the side just like you do in live stream. All right, so if you're here, if you would toss your name in that box um, or just say hi so I know that I'm not talking to myself. Um, go Paisley in the back there. We undecorated for Halloween, so my, my cabinet's looking very bare, and this week we will be going right to Christmas. Uh, we don't host Thanksgiving, so we um, choose to, to not decorate for Thanksgiving, still celebrate it. We still love it. We still eat our turkey and mashed potatoes, um, but we go right into Christmas decor. So, all right, I am going to get started. Yay, there's a viewer. Um, viewer, I'm not sure who it is, but if you click on the chat button up in the top corner, it's a blue box with white writing. Uh, you should get a little chat box on the bottom and you can type your name, say hi. Uh, okay, so we're gonna get started. Oh, they went away, I scared them, okay. Yay, they're back. All right, so this uh, call, <laughs> as I sit here looking at all my papers, what am I doing here? This call is on organization um, and pretty much just getting organized to better use your time. Um, you know, time management and organization really go hand in hand. I am probably going to offend people, and I do apologize up front for that. But I hear a lot of people say to me all the time that I don't, I don't have time. I don't have time to, uh, to make my follow-up phone calls. I don't have time to work Pink Zebra. Like, I'm just, I'm just way too busy. And, and I, get, I get it. Okay, I do want you to keep, I, I know, like, this is my full-time job, so I have, you know, a lot more time than a lot of other people do right now. However, when I started Pink Zebra, uh, for the first two years I did Ping Zebra, I was a full-time teacher. Uh, we did, I did homebound on the side, so that was anywhere between five and ten hours a week after school. I was a full-time wife and a full-time mom of two kids and two fur babies. So my kids uh, were a little, or a little older. I mean, they're still, they're still babies. Uh, eight and five, or what was it? Three and six at the time, um, but I still had to, you know, my son was at the point where he was needing to go to different places, so he was doing karate, so we were driving him to and from, and, um, you know, thankfully my husband was very supportive. That will be another call, possibly next week. Um, but the whole thing is that you, you, have to, you have to make time. If you don't want to make time, that is, that is fine. You don't have to do it. Um, again, not everybody's going to work it the same way. I know what I want out of Pink Zebra, and I'm going to keep going until I get it. Um, but I had to make some sacrifices, and I'm not going to make this call about me, but I do just want you to know, um, I can count on one hand how many hours of television I watch a week, and I'll tell you right now that um, two of them are on Sunday night. The only time I'm not available for you guys. Now, yes, the TV's on in the background and stuff like that, but... I, I sacrificed watching all the different television shows so that I can get my work done um, during that time because I do try to get as much done when my kids aren't up and about and running around as I possibly can. Um, okay, sorry, someone was asking about the chat box. Um, all right, so what it is is it's about prioritizing. So um, we all have time. We all have the same, you know, 24 hours in a day, I think, there's a little Mimi or Mem or whatever they're called about how everybody has the same amount of hours as Beyonce. Uh, but 
what we're going to talk about t today is how to utilize that time better, and one of the best ways to do that is by keeping organized. Um, I did read a quote today by Ralph Waldo Emerson that I did want to share. It's, and Lindsay, I think you are on the call, so I'm calling you out on it. Uh, once you make a decision, the universe conspires to make it happen. So if you can just get it in your head, Lindsay, I'm not just pointing you out, Lindsay, I'm talking to everybody now. Um, if you can just get it in your head and you make that decision, and again, if it wants, if you want it to be to quit your job, or if you want it to be three parties a month so that you have an extra couple hundred dollars, whatever you are saying, whatever decision you're making, you need to you need to stick with that, and you need to really try hard not to give up, and and you will get discouraged, and that's why we're here to to get you guys pumped up again. Um, so again, I get that everybody's not working it the same way, but no matter how you're doing it, being organized is going to help you with your time management. So I have some examples of ways that I like to stay organized. Um, my husband sort of laughed at me when I told him I was doing a call on organization because my office is a hot mess. Uh, every pink zebra product is now sitting on the floor of my office as I'm preparing for the events that are coming up. Um, so he was like, I'm sorry, what? I said, yeah, I am organized if I just implement everything that I that I have you know, to stay organized. So we're going to start with parties. And one of the ways that I like to organize my parties is with this envelope right here. So um, these are nice because order forms fit right inside. And each one of them, if, if you're really tech savvy, you can pop these right through your printer and print all this stuff out. I, I like writing it with a Sharpie marker. So on my envelope, I have the pers a spot for their name, the address, their phone number, the date of their party, the date I closed their party, the subtotal, um, the total cost with shipping and tax, everything, and the number of items. I also include a little section up here for miles because in my mind, I really want to like write that down every time I, I do a party so that um, in February when I'm doing my taxes, I don't have to get my calendar together and look up the Google map every single party I've ever been to. So it's a good idea if you get in the habit of writing the miles down. Um, don't forget to include to and from, and you're going to and from the party, and if you're dropping the party stuff back off later, you want to include that to and from again too. And then the party number. So this is all my, on my front. Um, oh, I usually put bookings on here too. And then on the back, the back is where I write the hostess rewards, and as you can see over here, I have two other columns. I have ordered and I have added. So let's say that the hostess gets three free items. And she wants a jar of pumpkin spice. She wants a, a jar of toasted marshmallow. And she wants a jar of gentle rain. All right. In my opinion, just not a good use of free items. And I'll even tell her, like, you know you can get like any item in the entire catalog for free, why don't you make the most expensive one? And she's like, no, I'm good on those. So I write those three things here as that's what she wanted. But then I go over here and I I put what I want. So if I want to order to a twig pumpkin or if I want to get the gunmetal skull shade, I'll actually order that as the free items and then I front the cost for her three $8 jars of sprinkles because in the long run when I resell these, I'm going to make that money back anyways. Or let's say everything's golden on here. Um, I don't change the order at all, but maybe I add, um, you know, my mom wanted some stuff, so I add that to this party. So I make sure that if I'm adding anything, because I was not doing this before, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I have like five extra jars of sprinkles. I don't know where these came from. So I have to start writing things down, because in my mind, if I don't write it down, it doesn't happen. So this has become very, very helpful for me. Um, I do have two bins. Um, downstairs and one is from 2014 and this one's 2015 and these guys are just lined up in there. Um, I do have them reverse chronological so the newest is up front and then uh, I can just sort of pick those out and I have everybody's information so I know that Sue had a party on um, January 10th and it was a $700 party all on there so I could call Sue up and be like hey Sue you had a killer January party you know I offer 10% off you want to try it again or you know whatever it might be so these are very very helpful in staying organized with parties um, the calendar and I know I've showed you guys this before this is my booking calendar that Mary Christensen suggested 
Um, anything that I can work. So this is just like a, this is that's all this is for. Like I don't go crazy and write anything else in this. I highlight all the days in the month that I can work, and the goal is to highlight three months out. I'm gonna look like a a bad leader here in a second because my January is not highlighted. Okay, so highlight the days you can work for three months out. Um, if you really want people, if you want to load up in the beginning of your month, maybe you put a sticker on there and tell people like, oh, there's a sticker. If you book on a day of a sticker, you get an extra free item or you get an extra special surprise, whatever it might be. When I book something, I write booked on it. Um, let's just say that you're super new and your calendar is naked and you're like, oh man, I don't want to look like I don't have anything going on. Uh, you go into a wedding that weekend, just write booked on there. And um, maybe you can't work on the 12th, but you highlight it anyways and write booked. It, it makes you look full. So that way, um, when people look at your calendar, and they're going to go, oh, wow, she has these days booked already? Okay, well, I better grab something. So um, they're more inclined. I have booked more parties using this calendar than just me asking people because I don't really put anybody on the spot. I used to say, well, I have these two days open. Which works best for you? And they're like, neither of them. So now I'm just like, oh, you want to book a party? Here you go. Pick a day and let me know what it is. So this has been very, very beneficial. I take this to parties and events. Um, a box of supplies. So I'm now getting to the point where I'm duplicating my box. So I have a box for parties and a box for events. And what I was doing is I was trying to transfer all of that stuff. So I'd be rummaging through my party supplies to take stuff to an event. Now, I, those square card readers, those are free. So you can go back on the Square website and you can order five of them if you wanted to. <laughs> so now I have one that I keep with my party supplies and I have one that I keep with my um, event supplies. I have a box of pens for my parties. I have a box of pens for my events. It just got to the point where I was forgetting things or I was panicking and freaking out because I couldn't find what I needed um, because I was keeping everything all as one, if that makes sense. Uh, okay, then I got a couple things. Okay, so this is my arc. Okay, three ring binders work just as well. This is my hostess page. I'm thinking that it's not going to be backwards when you guys see it. I think we've established this already, but it's backwards to me. So on this page here, and I think it's in Paisley Freedom. If not, I can always upload it. I have the hostess's information, their address, their phone number, their email, the date and time of party, their location. So if they're not having it at their house or having a Panera, wherever it might be, uh, if there's going to be a theme, I write that theme down. And I will tell you, and I, if you weren't on the call that we did about parties, most people don't even think, most hostesses don't even think to do a theme. you gotta, you got to get it out there and let them know, like, oh, we could do a Margarita Monday or a Sangria Saturday or uh, Taco Tuesday, whatever it might be. And you would be surprised at the uh, invite response and how drastically it changes when there is a theme. People are like, oh, a Pink Zebra Party? Mm, yeah, if I don't have anything to do, I'll come. They're like, oh, a Taco Tuesday Pink Zebra Party? I'll bring the nacho chips. So... Try really hard to, you know, maybe come up with a couple themes and um, and present those to your hostess. So I have a checklist when I made initial contact, mail and gave their hostess packet. I text, call, or email them, and I thank them, and I confirm the date and time. I friend them on Facebook, and I private message them their event link, um, their event page on Facebook. That's where I put their party link. I put my fan page link on there and just let people know like, oh, head over to my fan page and give me a like. I'm not afraid to ask for it. I'm not saying a lot of people will do it, but um, you know, shoot me a like so you can see any specials that might be coming up. Um, I do Red Stamp. Red Stamp is a free app that you can create your own invite through text message and I write it in the voice of the hostess and then I send it to the hostess and then she can forward it to all her friends and family um, on top of everything else that she's doing. Then I call and I check to see if there's any questions. Um, I will send another text to get sort of an idea of how many people are going to be there. Um, I send her two days prior another red stamp um, invite so that she knows, like, it's just like, hey, guys, don't forget my party's on Friday. Uh, let me know if you can come. And then I send it to her. It makes it super easy peasy for the hostess. Then she just has to forward it to her friends. Then I call and confirm the date, time, and address. 
I tag her on Facebook the day, him or her, I should say, uh, tag them on Facebook the day of their party. Then we have their party. Then I do a thank you on Facebook. Um, I do a paper thank you. And I add 90% of the time, I'm actually really bad at this, 90% of the time, I don't do it. <laughs> um, but going back to their event page and writing down what their rewards were so that the rest of their, their guests can see, like, holy crap, she got $300 worth of product for 110 That's awesome. Uh, and then I do my follow-ups. So that's my hostess sheet. Um, another way that I, and I just learned this, I have a page in the front of my hostess section called my reschedule. And all of these little tabs, this is sort of sad, all these little tabs are people that have canceled. So um, I am going, they're on my reschedule page, and I can take them and call them and reschedule. And then what's nice is in my calendar, okay, we're at the end of the month, so that's a different calendar, so you don't have to, the end of the year, so you have to bear with me here. Um, I take that sticky note, because I got really sick and tired of like highlighting pink things, and then someone would cancel, and I'm like, oh my god, I already got that highlighted. Now, if you can see, Serena here is having a party at 2 o'clock. Um, if she cancels, I can just pull that out and stick her on my reschedule page and not have to worry about all the highlighting I did. So I'm, I love that, that new tip. Um, and I do have those in the front of my ARC binder as well. So that's pretty much how I try to stay, try the keyword, although I'm trying really hard not to use try. Um, that's how I attempt to stay organized with my parties. Um, the other way is for my follow-ups. And follow-ups, you're going to do follow-up calls with your, with your team, and you're also going to do follow-up calls with your, with your leads. And uh, this is an entire box of leads. So all those little guest care cards you get when you do events, and you're like, I don't know what to do with them. I found this on YouTube. Um, it worked for me. I feel like there's still a way that maybe we could perfect it. So if you guys have a better idea or a better way to do it, please, please share with me. Um, share with all of us. So the way this works is there are um, there are eight tabs in here, and they're labeled one through four twice. Okay. And this I got all this from Walmart from Walmart for like four dollars, and it's a recipe book re recipe box. So they're labeled one through four. I have names in here, so I'm gonna try really not hard not to like show them. Ah. Okay. So what I do is the first week of November. This is my first week of November call call pile. All right, there's a lot in there. Um, when I do my follow-ups, if it's a text message, I'm like, hey, it's Jessica with Pink Zebra. My follow-up philosophy is to keep following up until you tell me not to. I uh, just wanted to let you know that if you book a party this month or next month, you're going to get blah, 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 blah. Um, so let me know. I still have a few dates open, and I'll even send a picture of my calendar. Um, do I, you know, sometimes they bite, sometimes they don't. So if they don't, and I get nothing, I take that group there and I move them to the back the back one, the second number one. Um, or if I don't get to them this week, then I move them into my number two for my second week of November because I do follow-up phone calls on Tuesdays. So, um, and we're talking about that, scheduling times to do stuff. So that's my follow-up box. Um, I do write, uh, okay, I guess it's really pointless to do this, but um, ah, if they are interested in joining, I highlight them blue. Um, I do put where I met them up in the corner. And then as I am messaging them, I write down uh, what when I've talked to them or what I pretty much what I've said, like if I offered a special or something like that, I write that in there too. However, this girl did tell me too that she's good. So sad. Um, so that's how I do my follow-up leads for parties and events and the whatnot. This one is for my consultants. All right, there are a lot of people that aren't in here yet, so I am sorry. This is for my front line um, or my adopted front line. We'll just leave it at that. Same thing, one, two, three, four, in here twice. Um, I have two stacks, and again, I'm not meaning to offend anybody, but we've all come to the conclusion that not everybody is working this business the same way. And I'm going to just use Lindsay for an example because she's I think hopefully on the call and she's not going to be offended. Um, so Lindsay would be in my leaders pile and that doesn't mean just because she's a manager. That just means that she's working the business and she is trying to um, 
you know, she wants to keep going. So Lindsay would be in my leader's pile, which means I'm going to call or contact her once a week. And usually that's a lot more often than that. So, I mean, just because it's Lindsay. But a lot of you, I, I contact a lot more often than I probably should, so I apologize. So those are my once a week people. And then I have my once a monthers in here. And it does make me happy that they're actually a lot smaller um, because the majority of people do want assistance. Um, and I contact them, you know, if I contact them once a week, it's not anything like, hey, how many parties are you having? And have you done this, this, and this? It's, hey guys, do you, you need any help with anything? Like, how's it going? Or Hey, I know you had an event this past weekend. Did everything work like you wanted it to? I'm not. I'm not pressuring anybody. You don't have to call me and tell me what you're doing. Um, we're just here. You know, your your sponsors are just here as support. Like people ask, you know, well, are you my boss? No, I'm not your boss, and I don't want to be your boss. You're your own boss. So I'm just here as your coach to to help you out. So that's how I organize my consultants and how I contact them. Um, or if there's anything special, like. Um, if they promoted, like I'll write down, uh, you know, the day they promoted and um, you know, stuff like that. So that's all in here. So that is how I do um, my follow-ups. I wrote something on here and I don't know where I wrote it. Okay, <laughs> so organized. <laughs> um, the next one is working your business, and this has been huge for me. I don't care if you're going from a consultant to an executive consultant, executive consultant to a manager, manager to EM, EM to director, whatever it might be. You, you have to have a plan. And I, our, our maps are very cute on our back office, but they do not, for me, I was not getting, I, I didn't have enough room. I'm very visual. One entire wall of our office downstairs is pretty much wallpapered in giant, like seriously like this big, those big huge pieces of construction paper and what I do is I, I gave you guys a minimum size here. Um, I fold it in half, these are made up people, just saying. Um, and this is what I did on my, to help myself know what was going on for, for the EM promotion. Okay, so let's just say you're going to manager. You need, and I only did two, you need four, I'm sorry, you need two executive consultants and you need two active consultants. So what I did, we're gonna look at Joan over here. Okay, so Joan needs one executive consultant. So Sally's looking pretty strong here. Sally has Sam and Patty that are active underneath of her. So I know that Joan needs one more person for her to promote to executive consultant, as long as she puts her 400 in. Now, I always put an extra person here that's my CYA person. Um, I like to have four. I encourage people to have four because if number three poops the bed on you, you still have number four to CYA. Um, so if number three goes inactive and four is filled and, and you have one, two, and four active, then Joan's still good. Um, she's happy. She's so, you know, is, is a paid as executive consultant. So that's why I aim for that. And then I see Janet. Janet has Jessica underneath of her. Um, so it looks like Janet wants to build, but right now she just has one recruit. And then we have Kim. And then we have Val. And uh, same thing here. Yes, we only need two executive consultants, but if Janet fills up and becomes an executive consultant and then decides not to put her 400 in, and this happens, then at least if Kim was an executive consultant too, you would have someone to fall back on. So try to build at least one more of whatever you need to CYA. Um, same thing down here. We only need a one, two active consultants, not executive consultants. Um, but I have a fifth one down here too. Okay, so what are these numbers next to it? When I'm looking at promoting, I can see, okay, Joe needs one more and then she's going to minimum. She needs one more and she can promote. Um, Janet needs two more. Kim needs three more. All right. And once this happens, once these people all fill in, then Joan will promote. So if you're going, again, whatever. Want to go to EM, then you would have four of these up. Okay. And here's Sue. 
Sue needs three here, one here, three here, and one here for a total of eight. Now some people look at those numbers and they're like, oh my god, I can't believe I gotta try to get eight people. I looked at it from the positive, like, okay, I only need eight people for this to happen. And I'm not gonna assume the responsibility of recruiting all those people. Like, Sue's gonna get out there and she's gonna do what she needs to do. Hopefully she's sharing. If she can get one or two, then maybe I can turn around, I can help her, and I can move someone under her. One, yes, Sue promoting is going to help me, but if Sue promotes, it's gonna help Sue. She's gonna become more confident, she's gonna wanna share the information more, she's gonna feel better, and in turn, it's, it is gonna help you as her sponsor. So I don't understand how people don't help their sponsor, their sponsors don't help them, because if, if you recruit somebody and they do well, it benefits you. So it's gonna benefit you to turn around and help them and answer their questions and give them guidance because in the long run it, it helps you out. So be nice to your recruits. Um, that's that. Now, what I was doing, waiting the beginning of the month and I was panicking last month. Let's see, so Joan would need $400 in sales and Janet would need 400. So next to Joan and next to Janet, this is what my wall looked like and as these people put their money in, I would tear that off. Boy, did it make me feel good to tear that stuff off. So again, I'm very visual. I like to see that. I like knowing what was going on, um, and it just gave me something to feel good about when I got to tear those, those numbers off. So this was extremely helpful. You pretty much get the same thing on the maps. Um, this is just a bigger version. Uh, you can even use you know, if, if, you, if you're strategically placing people, you have 30 days to do that. Write their name on a post-it note. Put them in different sections before you actually move them and figure out where you want to put someone. So this was extremely, extremely helpful. Um, organized. Yeah, ZebraNet. Every time you go to a party, I should have had that in a party. But that wasn't organized. Um, you always want to check the back office for out of stock. Uh, really, you should be checking. If you are working this business, you should be checking ZebraNet at least once a day. If this is just your side gig, I would not let it go for more than a week without at least just checking in and just seeing um, what Ping Zebra has to share with us. And make sure you know that rallies, rally was announced already, not where, but at least we know it's going to be January 30th. Um, you can already start paying for reunion and the shipping schedule for the holiday is, is out. So that's all stuff that you really need to know. Um, when it comes to uh, working your business. Because if you don't check your out-of-stock list, it goes back to time management, if you don't check your out-of-stock list and you do a party and your party's an hour away, right, and you come home and you get all your stuff and you're putting it all in, and you notice that five people ordered the holiday hangouts, which are not in stock right now, okay? Now what do you gotta do? You gotta call all five of those people and be like, hey, uh, the holiday hangouts aren't in stock right now, but, um, this thing is, and that would be great. Would you like to try that, or what would you would you like your money back, or you, however you're going to do it? The thing is, is you just wasted probably an hour of making phone calls because you didn't take five minutes. You don't even need five minutes to check the out of stock list. So really, it's about just being organized. And um, I forget sometimes, which is nice because you get your phone, you just hurry up and pull it up. I screenshot it and then I take it to the party with me, so I don't have to keep logging back on. Um, so use ZebraNet. ZebraNet should be your best friend. Okay, your schedule. You want to have a schedule. Um, I schedule days. Uh, some people schedule hours or 15-minute increments. Um, again, if you're not working the business full-time, you know you still want to devote something. You want to treat it. Lindsay talked about this last week. If you treat your business like a hobby, it, that's what it's going to be, a hobby. And that's how other people are going to see it. If you treat your business like a business, even if it is, a two-party a month business, if you treat it like a business, people will act like it's a business. Um, make a day that you just do samples and do it during you know, the commercials or while you're watching TV or whatever it might be. Sit down and make your samples. Um, make your packets. Uh, do your follow-up calls. Schedule a day or a time that this is when you do your follow-up calls. I hate them. I hate Tuesdays because I hate making follow-up follow follow -up phone calls, but it has to get done. Um, schedule a time or day where you do your team follow-ups. Now, I gotta work on this, but folders. Okay, so folders on your phone. So many of us use our phones 
for Facebook parties, um, just your events, whatever it might be, just posting stuff, it is going to be beneficial to you if you have a section on your phone that is just devoted to Pink Zebra. Um, so like I have a 30 minute Facebook folder on my phone that's all the pictures that I would use for my, my Facebook parties. Those are all in there. Um, I have uh, reminders, you know, happy birthday stuff, those kinds of things, welcome pictures. That, those are all different folders on my phone because instead of me having to scroll through 650 photos to try to find the welcome picture, I can now take three seconds and do it and get in there and click it. So it might take you 20 minutes to organize your, your pictures, but if you can sacrifice just one 20 minute increment to do that, you're going to save so much time in the long run. Um, so just take that organization and just doing it a little bit at a time uh, will help you out. So same thing with emails. I'm really bad about that. Um, I have like 750 open, like they've been read and I just don't want to get rid of them and I don't know what to do with them. Make a folder on the side for fundraisers and every time you get a fundraiser approval, move it over there so that you know if, if it's in question, you don't have to scroll through 700 emails. You know that you are in the habit of moving it over to this folder. So you can open that folder up for fundraiser and say, oh look, yeah, on October 15th, I got an email that said that this fundraiser was approved. Boom, you're good. Um, or even if you have certain fundraisers that you do all the time, give each one of those people or those organizations their own folder in your, in your email so that you can keep all of your correspondences. All right, same thing on your computer. If you, have, if you use your computer to post pictures or uh, whatever it might be, organize those files on your computer so that they are more easy to find. Um, Google Docs is awesome and I have just gotten into moving things into like I have a recruiting folder, um, I have a party folder so that I know that if I'm talking about a party or if I need something about a party, I just click on that. I don't have to scroll through, you know, 57 documents to see where I'm going to, um, cause I can't remember what I name things or it's like party on the go one, party on the go two, party on the go five. So just keeping yourself organized on your computer folders that you take to events and parties. I do take a bag, um, it's my zebra bag. I can put files in it. Oh, it's in the corner somewhere. But I have my fundraising information in there. Packets. I have joining packets in there. I have extra order forms. Coloring sheets. I printed out a Paisley coloring sheet, like a thousand copies when I first started. <laughs> so um, I have a whole bunch of those just in case they have kids and somebody wants to color or grown-ups, whatever. Uh, blank paper and wish list, things like that. So I keep that with me and I do take that to all of my parties and all of my events. Uh, just because then I'm not getting stuff wrinkled, you know, and I know exactly where it's going to be. All right. Uh, okay, so we talked about it pretty much being organization, uh, time management, and, and prioritizing. So I looked up a whole bunch of, I heard the other day, um, I'm all into this whole minimalistic, minimalistic living, because, um, you know, we have a ton of crap. We've told much, so much stuff in our house, and it is hard to be organized, and it makes me sick because it's like I feel like my kids are so spoiled, and um, I just see crap everywhere at all times. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to look into this. And now I'm not going crazy. Like, there's some people that only live with 100 items, and I, I can't. I'm like, all right, is that my phone and my charger, or can I count that as one? Um, you know, stuff like that. So I'm not going that crazy, but we did downsize a lot, and as I was looking on this information, I found an article about what successful people do every day. Um, and President Obama, Steve Jobs, and Mark Zuckerberg, who is the Facebook guy, <laughs> um, they all have something in common that I was very surprised about. And um, they wear a uniform every day. And I thought, okay, no, they don't. Because in my mind, a uniform's like khaki pants and a red shirt or like, um, you know, black, black slacks and a white dress shirt, whatever, uniform. Steve Jobs wore a black turtleneck every day. That was his work uniform. Uh, President Obama, I think they said he either wears a gray suit or a blue suit every day. I think he wore like a cream colored one one day and people like lost their minds. Um, Mark Zuckerberg, his... His work uniform is a t-shirt and a hoodie 
right? And it sort of sounds crazy, but I started to look into it, and their philosophy is that they don't want to waste their energy on silly things. Okay, standing in front of your closet and staring at your closet for 20 minutes trying to figure out what you want to wear is a waste of time, in their opinion. Okay, I'm just I'm just throwing it out there what these successful people do. I'm not saying to go get rid of all your clothes. Um, but it just goes back to priorities and their priority was to gain time and by doing it, they stopped wasting their energy on these types of things. So another option, and again, this just depends on how you're working the business, is to brand yourself. You should be a walking billboard. Um, I, if I'm not wearing a pink zebra shirt, and again, I get it, I'm a little different, um, but if I'm not wearing a pink zebra shirt, I have my pin on, and I substitute teach every once in a while, and even when I sub, and I do sub in a place where I'm allowed to wear jeans and a t-shirt, and I've totally worn a couple of pink zebra shirts, um, but this pin, it gets me a lot of attention. So at least people know when they are talking to me that I have something to do with pink zebra or this really cute little zebra thing. Like, oh, what is that? Um, so it gets people talking. So you're branding yourself. And um, if you can get away with wearing a uniform, and again, it doesn't have to be some you know crazy, you know, I'm sorry, Lynn, you probably know what I want to say, but um, it doesn't have to be some crazy uniform that you would wear at a Catholic school or anything like that. It's just whatever you are comfortable with, that's pretty much what you wear every day. It doesn't have to be the same thing every day. Like You can get like four pair of jeans or five different kinds of t-shirts, but um, you know, it's just making your choices easier. So now instead of having 20 minutes of picking out your outfit, you've gotten dressed in five, and now you have 15 to go answer some emails. Or something along those lines. You want to make time for emails. Um, you want to schedule social networking time. Um, I know Belinda Ellsworth talked about this when we were in Nashville, and she schedules 15 minute increments morning, afternoon, evening, and then she allows herself about 30 minutes after work is all finished to troll Facebook um, because that's what happens. If you don't schedule your time, I have to set an alarm on my phone for 15 minutes because if I do not, I'm watching cat videos. I like I don't even know how it happens, but you next thing you know, you click on something and you're like, oh, that cat's so cute, and that leads you to that next cat video. And then there's a dog one, and then there's yelling, screaming goats, and next thing you know, it's been like 30 minutes, and you know you've been watching goat videos. So schedule your social networking time. Schedule yourself time to to troll it. Um, Get yourself into a routine. You want to also uh, fuel your mind. Like, I know that sounds silly. I know that sounds cheesy. But if you have the time, uh, go to the library and get a book on CD about, you know, it doesn't have to be about sales. Maybe it's about leadership. Maybe it's about talking to people. Um, maybe it's, you know, a self-help book. Maybe you have a hard time getting in front of people and, and you can find something to... Um, to listen to that would help you. you know, don't be afraid to do that. We waste, I don't want to say waste a lot of time, but we are in our cars a lot, especially if you're driving to and from these parties. And I'm booking parties like an hour and 10 minutes away, and I love my music. I don't have anything special. Uh, you know, I don't have serious or anything like that, but you know, in one hour, you can hear the same song like four times. So it can, can get a little old. So if you have a CD or if you have a, um, a book on tape CD that you can listen to, that can always be helpful. And then Pick your preference. Either wake up early or stay up late. You know, I'm not really good at getting up in the morning. Like, I just don't like to get out of bed. <laughs> um, <clears throat> like, I'll get up. I'll be awake at 6 o'clock or even quarter to 6, and I'm like, please go back to sleep. Please go back to sleep <laughs> instead of just getting up. Um, but I can, I can stay up till 2 in the morning and be on the computer and do work. So pick your preference. And uh, it doesn't have to be four hours early. Maybe you get up an extra 15 minutes early and you get those emails out of the way before your kids get up or before you have to start putting lunches together or before you get in your shower. Um, but again, it's just about scheduling and, and getting your priorities together. So again, going back to that, um, those people that are really success, successful, and you can Google it, successful things that are like top 10 list of people, top 10 list of things people do that are successful um, or wealthy people, whatever it might be. They're really big on, one, greeting everybody by name. I know that has nothing to do with organization, but I thought that that was pretty 
pretty good. And that's something that I know that I want to work on is when you're talking to people and just like, oh, hey, how are you? know, this is, this is Sally. And I'm like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. I'm Jessica. But, you know, next time I might say, oh, hi, Sally. I'm Jessica. And you're, it's just, I don't know. It sounds good. So I'm going to try it. Um, <clears throat> focus on being productive and not busy. So don't you reward yourself for just spending time working. Reward yourself for getting something done. Um, you know, I don't know how many times I've sat here and been like, oh my god, I worked all day long today, and like nothing. I didn't accomplish anything on my list. Like, well, what did I do all day? Um, so just work on being productive and not just keeping yourself busy. Smart goals, and I do love seeing this because I know that's something that Pink Zebra really um, has promoted a lot. I do believe you can find that on your back office. Smart goals. That means that you're writing goals that are specific, they're measurable, they're attainable, they're relevant, and they're timely. They're concrete, they're narrowly defined, and you can actually measure the progress. Uh, taking leaps. All right. Successful people, they are the number one reason people don't succeed at their goals is because they don't even try. Um, you're hurting yourself every day that you don't give yourself the chance to accomplish your goal. All right. Log your progress. You know, if you have five parties this month, write it down. Yeah, November, five parties this month. Woo! Um, Jim Kessler gave me a, a really good suggestion that I don't know why I never thought about it. Go on every day. Now, I do mine the first thing in the morning for the night before. So when I get up, you know, it's 7 o'clock. Well, I get up earlier than that. But when I come out and get on the computer at 7 or have a second to do it, um, I look at my dashboard sales and I write it for the day before. And then I go back in, I look at my total sales, and I write that next to it. So each day, and I don't do it every day, I wish I would remember to do it, um, each day I can see where the progress has happened. So I know that come November 15th to November 30th, or even November um, 25th through the 30th, that's when I'm going to see the biggest increase in sales for my team because that's what's happened um, Excuse me. every month pre previous. So writing those kinds of things down so that you can log your progress. Um, wake up early. We talked about that. Uh, successful people, they prioritize. They, they exercise, even if it's just taking a walk on their lunch break, uh, meditating, you know, wake up that 15 minutes early and just take some time to yourself and just breathe and get your trap together. Um, they build relationships. They want to... Um, they plan and strategize at their peak performance time. So again, Jessica's peak performance time is probably not 7 a.m. Um, unfortunately, it's more like 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. Can't really do follow-up phone calls then. Um, but at least I can make my plan and I can strategize. Strategize. Yeah. Um, they plan their day before they go to sleep. So before you get up, before you go to bed at night, write out your list of what you're going to do tomorrow. Um, you know, it doesn't even if it's not pink zebra related. Just writing down like, okay, I got to. My aunt does it. She, in fact, she called me today. She's retired. She's like, on my list, I have that I need to get my bank book and that I have to get my insurance card. She's going to buy a new car tomorrow. Um, so she has all this stuff on her list. And I said, why are you calling me about your list? Because I write a list every night before I go to bed. I was like, wow, that's just learned all about that. So don't be afraid to make your list the night before. Um, map out your day when you wake up. So figure out what what's taking precedence. What's going to happen first? What what times was it going to happen? You know, you always want to be able to be flexible because um, you never thought I'd quote Mike Tyson, but Mike Tyson has a quote that everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face, and it's inevitable. You can write it out, and you can have every aspect of your plan put down on paper. And then something is going to happen that's going to screw it up. So you need to either take your 10 minutes and go cry in the bathroom, okay? Um, go cry in the bathroom for 10 minutes and then come back up, suck it up, and, and get going again and revamp your plan. Um, don't change your goal. You just revamp your plan and your path to get there. Uh, organize your workspace. First thing in the morning, like if you're working from home or whatever, before you actually start whatever you're doing at your desk, make sure your desk is cleaned up. Um, as, and I'm so glad you can't see my work area right now <laughs> because there's stuff everywhere. Um, not practicing what I preach. So just making sure that you, because if it's organized, then again, you're not wasting that time looking for things all over the place. 
Uh, everything should have a home. Um, oh, successful people. Really hard time understanding this because I'm like super ADHD. Uh, they don't multitask. And I thought about it and I'm like, what? Everybody multitasks, right? Like that's how it works. Um, Belinda Ellsworth had talked to us at, at Rally in Nashville um, and how men and women are so different. And as this is happening, Lindsay and I are sitting there, I'm like, oh my God, this is so true. Like I can't believe it. <clears throat> she talked about how women, right? They come in and they'll have their list and everything they're going to do. And she's like, oh, I sit down. She's like, I get my kids off to, off to school and I say goodbye to my husband and I sit down and I start my, um, my list and then I realize I need a cup of coffee. So I go over and I get a cup of coffee and I go, I drink it and I go to put it in the sink and I realize there's all these dishes. So I do the dishes and then I throw the dish towel in the hamper and then I'm like, oh, you know what? I should just go put a little laundry in. So she goes downstairs and she puts her laundry in and then she comes back upstairs and she makes one or two phone calls, but then, you know, the laundry's done now, so she goes down and she folds it and she comes back up, she puts it away. Next thing you know, it's time to get dinner started, and husband comes home, and the kids come home, and he's like, oh, what'd you do all day? And she's like, oh, I, you know, I got a lot of stuff done, and especially my husband, because he's like, well, what'd you do on your list today? And I'm like, oh, I didn't get anything done on my list. And he's like, you said you were busy all day today. So that's me, Jessica does that. And then guys are very, very focused but they sort of waste time. So she talked about them going in, clean the garage, right? So they go in, they clean the garage, they take everything out of the garage. And then they're like, you know what? I need a shelf from Home Depot. So they drive to Home Depot and they get that shelf and they come back and they put the shelf together and they start putting stuff on the shelf. And they're like, you know what? I need one of those things that hangs my shovels and my mops and stuff up. So they drive back to Home Depot and they come back and you know the garage is in pristine condition and wife, significant other comes home and um, she's like, you know, there's trash everywhere. You couldn't take the trash out today. It doesn't even see the, the beautiful garage. But um, it just talks about how men and women are so different when it comes to multitasking. And we think we're being productive and then we're getting all this stuff done, but we're really not. So successful people, they don't multitask. They pick something to focus on and then they focus on it. Very hard for those of us who are work from home um, even if you can control your own brain to not have to do this stuff, other people have a hard time understanding that this is what you're focused on right now. You can't drop everything to go run here or run there or, you know, come up to hold a ladder or whatever it might be. So I'm almost done, I promise. Um, tackling the hardest thing first on your list. That's a huge one. For me, that's follow-up phone calls. If I have on my list, I'm making 15 follow-up phone calls today, I wait I do everything else, plus some laundry, plus maybe clean the bathroom. I hate it. I hate follow-up phone calls. Tackle your hardest thing first because then the rest of your day is going to be easy peasy. Um, that's it. So I hope some of the organization strategies have helped a little bit. Um, you know, definitely try to implement that calendar. That's a huge one. And, you know, this guy here, this really, really helps. These maps really help. Um, it just gives you an idea of how far, or how close, let's not say how far away, how close you are to what you're working towards. So if you have any questions, you can always message me or uh, you can comment on this once it gets uploaded to YouTube or message us on the on the page. Um, thank you for those of you guys who, who attended. Yay. All right, guys. Best of luck. See ya.